Hi everyone, this is Nadine from Mad Zach Stitch and this is floss tube number 25. So this is the first one of 2021. I was planning to have a last one um, of 2020 but that didn't happen. So so yeah, so here we are, it's the 3rd of January. Tomorrow we're back to work, so I better cut it. Yeah, after three weeks off I'm not really um, looking forward to tomorrow but I thought this is a good time to do a floss tube. It's a bit unexpected. I wasn't planning this. Um, so I've got, as you can see, I've got everything around me. Um, the dynamics changed a bit of the room because I built a new desk only a couple of days ago. So I'm still trying to figure out where everything goes. So right now I have everything around me. Um, but yeah, sorry for the clutter. Um, I hope you all had a good new year. We had a good new year. It was okay. Um, it was quiet. As expected, I think last time I recorded it was before Christmas. So um, for Christmas Eve, we just had a quiet Christmas Eve at home. Um, Christmas Day, well, we did go to the shops in the morning, but in the evening we didn't do much. Uh, Christmas Day, we went to Michael's mom and there was his aunt as well. It was small, it was social distance and everything as it should be. Um, but yeah, so um, obviously I missed my family. I couldn't be there with them, but um, it's for the best right now. So I'm hoping that I get back to Malta soon and then we can celebrate then when I can get there. So here things are, we're in tier four. So I'm kind of glad I didn't go to Malta because then I would have had problems coming back. The, a lot of the flights are all cancelled and yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's light. So um, other than that, um, you know, it's been, it's been good. I've been stitching loads, well loads been stitching and I've been doing a lot of kitting. I prepared a lot of things. I've been doing stuff around the house and, and all of that. So it's been a good three weeks. I'm not ready to go back to work, but I gotta go back to work. So tomorrow will be interesting. Um, <laughs> let's see if I manage to wake up on time. I will. I will be able to. This morning I woke up at eight on purpose to prepare myself for, um, for tomorrow. But uh, yeah, um, I hope you all are okay you know let me know and happy new year to everyone um i hope 2021 you know brings you guys what you need to be good and happy and healthy um you know it is what it is right now and we all make the best of it and i'm sure 2021 will be better than 2020 even though i, I can't complain it wasn't that bad for us personally in 2020 um, oh this is a channel about floss uh, about cross stitch forgot to say that so if you stumbled upon this channel and you're not interested in cross stitch or you could stay and then maybe you'll get interested in cross stitch but if you're not interested in cross stitch this is a channel about cross stitch um, I want to say thank you to everyone who watched me who watches all my videos to thank you to new viewers you know hi welcome to new viewers but i do want to say thank you to all my subscribers and the viewers that actually watch me and um, watch my videos all the time and they reach out and you know they've become friends i do really appreciate it and you know big happy new year to you guys and a big thank you to you guys i do really really appreciate it um so what do we have today? We have a small finish, which was finished on the last day of 2020 because I wanted to have a finish on the last day. Uh, we have some gifts, um, whips. I'm gonna talk about the plans. So last video I showed you what I'm gonna do letter of the month wise. Um, and then today I'm gonna just outline what else, what other challenges I'm I'm thinking of doing for 2021. Um, so plans, whips, haul. Yeah, haul, there you go. So that's what we're gonna do. And then it's gonna be a bit of a mix because I've got a few gifts that I've already started. So they're already whips kind of thing. So yeah, so I'm gonna start with some happy mail I got that I wasn't expecting. So I last saw you on the 23rd and on the 24th, I get this big package. And Michael looks at me, he goes like, what now? And I was like, quite honestly, I don't know. I looked at the address and I was like, I, I, 
I didn't order this, I think. And he's like, oh, you order so much, you don't even remember. He always does that. He's like, you don't even know what you ordered. It just arrives and you don't know. Because it's true, sometimes I arrive, like I have three packages and I'm like, I don't remember why I got but But I was like, I'm, I was very sure that because of Christmas and everything, I've been keeping track exactly of what I, I've been ordering. So I open it and it was a nice gift from Michelle from Little Rabbit Needlework. So um, I have mentioned Michelle before and I've shown her project bags before, her beautiful, gorgeous project bags. Um, and she has a, an Etsy shop, which I've linked before, but I will link again in, in, this, um, in the comments as well today. Well, uh, Michelle sent me a little package. She sent me a, a couple gifts and they're just amazing and I had tears in my eyes. So thank you, Michelle. I did want to, I know I've thanked you already through private message and through Instagram, but I just want to say thank you again. I was, I was in tears. I was set to my comps like, because a few days before I had my gift from Tracy, which I showed you in the last video and, and all of that. And then I got this from Michelle, which I'm going to show you in a second. And I just, it, it, it's, it's amazing how these people I've never met and we've become friends and you create a connection. So thank you, Michelle. I do appreciate it. So first of all, I'm very, very excited. I've never had a pillow made of cross stitch, like an, a cross stitch ornament that is a pillow or whatever. I frame everything. I have in the past framed everything. So I never have explored, even though now I've seen so much different ways how you can finish. I want to finish it in a different way. But Michelle stitched herself and sewed herself this little ornament here. Absolutely love it. And I forgot to ask but I believe because when I bought my project bags from Michelle, she sent me a couple um, patterns that she designed like ornament patterns that I've put to the side and I do plan to stitch them for next year into pillows right so I believe that Michelle also designs these little ornaments and she does sell at the pillows so on her um on her Etsy she not only sells the project bags she actually stitches and makes pillows up and she sells them already done for people who don't want to stitch them themselves right so you can find them there but look at this gorgeous thing so the pillow has a uh, beads oh, it's not look at how cute they are and then Obviously, she's used a different fabric down here with poinsettias. I love poinsettias and I love red and green. Like, I love traditional Christmas colors. And there's the bag. It's got felt and it's got this little motif, which I'm guessing it's where, yeah, where you stuffed it. And then you, you hide the, the cut to stuff it. But it's so, so neat. And it's got, like, beads at the back as well, the little button. And it's gorgeous. So, I know it's Christmassy. It doesn't become more Christmassy than this. However, this pillow is going to go on top. Oh, there. There. So it's going to be put there with my threads. And it's going to stay out all year round. Right? So I had it downstairs on show for Christmas. But then now I'm starting to remove my Christmas decorations. And this is going to just stay out. And it's going to sit here with me. I work here. And it's my craft room and it's going to stay out all year round and I'll look at it when I go in and out of the room and I'll smile because that's, yeah, that's what I do. Every gift that is either handmade, cards and all of that, I do bring them up and I keep them here and I will, I will look at them every day. So for example, here right by me, I've got my friends Tracy um has her her daughter her and her daughter created a christmas card and it's already by me i've already brought it upstairs i've been bringing stuff upstairs slowly so so yeah so i keep everything and that is handmade and i keep them on show so that i can see them so that is gonna stay out all year round i'm gonna put it here for now and then the other thing that Michelle sent me and I was totally blown away. Michelle sent me a new project bag and it's got a mermaid on it, but not only a mermaid. So I jokingly 
have been telling Michael for the last three weeks. Every time I watch a movie and I see something cute, I'm like, please, and it's an animal or something that, you know, it's living and cute. I'm like, please, can we have one? And I did that with The Mandalorian. We watched The Mandalorian, and I love Baby Yoda, who's name is Grogu really and I've been saying oh can you can we get a Grogu and he actually got me a Grogu for Christmas and actually it's here I'm gonna keep him near me and it's an animatronics one and I know a lot of people say oh it's a doll but I know it's a doll but it's it's amazing because it I'm not gonna switch it on right now but when you lie down it sleeps and it like snores and when you pet it it giggles the exact way it does on on the movie so this year i've been mindering him for a baby yoda a reindeer um an elf and then mr narwhal from elf from the movie elf and he got me grogu i have a reindeer he got me a reindeer last week last year he got me a build a bear reindeer so when i received the project bag and i took it out the first thing michael says goes like Oh my god, Mr. Narwhal! So this is the project bag. And that's Mr. Narwhal from Elf. And I, I'm pretty sure Michelle wouldn't have known about how I've been for weeks going like, I want Mr. Narwhal! Please give me a Mr. Narwhal! But she has embroidered a Mr. Narwhal on this project bag. And look at this mermaid. And it's all embroidered. It's gorgeous. Got the little starfish and the seahorse shells in there so i've already put stuff in it so i've got shimmering mermaid by mirabilia if i show you the inside of the project bag it's all like uh, quilted it's gorgeous it's absolutely gorgeous so i was over the moon not only that here at the top there's my initials and x and it's just it's a great size and i, I was just blown away so I've already, I'm already using it, obviously, but I keep looking at it, I, 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 and it brings a smile on my face because this is just, this is absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. So um, thank you, Michelle. I, I do, I do. There was a card as well, um, which I have downstairs with my the rest of my cards. But um, yeah, I like I do appreciate it. I do have no words, so I'm stammering a bit, but. I just wanted to say thank you, Michelle. I do really, really appreciate it. It's it's amazing and you know, yeah, <laughs> you shouldn't have. You didn't have to. So yeah, so that, that brought me a lot of happiness on the on Christmas Eve when I was a bit sad about not being with my family, obviously, not being with my parents and my niece and nephew. Um on, on this day so it, it, it brought a smile on my face and I was trying to plan what I'm gonna put on it and where I'm gonna put the pillow and you know Michael was so happy to see me like that he kept going like oh look at your little face your little face I'm like I know I just like felt so happy but yeah I do appreciate it um right so that's I wanted to show you that now Michael got me some stitchy gifts now you I've, I've shown in my previous videos that he bought me a kit from the drawn thread called Christmas Jumble that I've already finished. I haven't FFO'd it yet. Um, yeah, I've been a bit mm, feeling a bit mm, melancholic and homesick, and I've just not been in the headspace of trying to learn how to FFO it. But it's it's I've put it aside, but not away, so that I I'll try and do that in the next month over a weekend. But um, on Christmas Eve, he did get me another kit. He gave me okay. He was like, let's open one gift so that we have something on Christmas Eve to open and then the rest of the gifts, we open them on Christmas Day. We always do that. Um, so the kit is already a whip and I'm gonna be showing you. And then on Christmas Day, I got another kit, another Mirabilia kit, which I started as well. So it's a whip I'm gonna show you. He got me other stuff like Grogu and other stuff that is not stitchy related, but he also got me, and I was so, so happy. He got me this book. And it's the book of embroidery from the Royal School of Needlework. And in it, you've got stuff, you got like instructions for cruel work, black work, white work, silk shading, stamp work, bead embroidery, canvas work, and gold work. It's very, very like 
in detail a lot of pictures so everything all the stitches that it shows you is all super in detail so I'm, I'm super happy about this I'm gonna be I've already started reading it and going through it actually the first thing I did as soon as I saw it I went to the back and I was like you know what I've already done a Hedy how I do it uh, video I haven't shown any others um, I haven't well I haven't published any others I have recorded another one but I haven't published any others um, and I thought, I want to see how it is in here. So the first thing I did was I went in here and I tried to look for, well, it's called the Norwich Stitch, but it's also called the, um, it's called the Norwich Stitch or it's called the Waffle Stitch. So I thought, I'm going to go in here and have a look how they do it. And um, so I was really happy that, it, you know, it showed you and it showed you one of the ways I, I showed you guys so it has it twice and I'm not sure why but there you go so there was that and up here it shows you again and it shows you bigger and smaller so I was very happy the second thing I did was as I was looking for Norwich stretch obviously the N in the index comes right after the M and I noticed there was Maltese cross stitch I was like a Maltese cross stitch what is that well, like I've never heard of a Maltese cross stitch like I didn't know there was something different and it is now you might have noticed my might too which is the Maltese cross well that's what it is it's the Maltese cross stitch not the Maltese cross stitch it's the Maltese cross stitch and it does look like a Maltese cross now I was over the moon to see this because I started the Long Dong Sampler Templar Prophecy which you'll see a start and on the shield I was thinking of changing the, the knights have a shield on it and I was thinking of changing it to the Maltese cross and as soon as I found this I was thinking I can actually do special stitches in it instead of crosses so yeah so it's very interesting the Malinese cross there's, there's so many things in here so I'll, I'll be you'll be seeing stuff from it and um, well always if you guys want to see stuff from it I, I do want to like go through it and pick out stitches especially stitches that are commonly used in in certain kits like chatelains and all of that and do how I do it like show how I stitch it and um, if you find that useful so this book I love it it's gonna be sitting here by me as well and I'll be able to read it and in the evening it goes near my bed so that I can read it so yeah I did well I did very well um, from the stitchy side Michael did yeah he came through he really came through with his gift so you can tell with my big smile um, about it so this year was a good one <laughs> in terms of getting stitchy stuff of, of Michael right so what did I do what's next I'm gonna show you finish I'm gonna show you my little fish finish right and then we go into plans so my finish it won't come as a surprise especially if you have me on Instagram it's the Just Nen Christmas ornament the 2018 and I do want to do 2019 and 2020 as well which I'll probably do next year Um, I finished it and that's where it is I've got this little thread tells me that this is the top that's that's the only reason I have that little thread so that's where it is it's all done you've got the little dragonflies and all the crinic i have the dragonfly charm and that to put it together so obviously like you can put the loop up there to have it as an ornament and you've got the bead that goes in the middle that's all here so I'll, i will need to learn how to ffo that as well the colors i'm having i'm struggling with colors because it's dark here but there you go that's better um I worked this on a 36 count uh, fabric from XG design called old cheap um, um, um it calls for 32 count and it's got blends in it so it's got where you should be using two strands in two different colors however 
I, I on 36 count, I used a one strand. So then what I did is I went and did half a stitch with one color at the bottom and half a stitch at the top with another color and then it blends like that. Um, you see here, let me see if I can see, these are all like that. So it, it you cannot really tell, but you can tell that here this pink in the middle is darker than the outside and that's because it's blended with some of the inner red. So that's that was my finish on my last day of 2020. Very happy with that finish. Um, I'll need to learn how to FFO it. Hopefully you'll see it in a couple of months as an FFO. Um, and yeah, well next year I'm gonna try and finish much more. So I'm gonna focus more on finishing stuff and FFOing stuff and all of that. That's why I did a lot of starts lately so that now I just wanna focus a lot on, I'm not gonna be doing like a lot of starts for Mania this year um, and, and all of that. So, so yeah, it's gonna be a different year this year where I try to focus more on working on what I have rather than keep starting even though I'll have starts. I'm not gonna do an old new start. That's, that's, that's not me, I wouldn't be happy. To, um, to do that. Sorry, I'm putting this in the... I've got my whip box underneath me, so I'm putting that in my whip box so that I have some space so that I can move on. So that was my finish. Now let's go to plans. And the reason I'm not going into whips first is because I've already started working on certain whips that are part of my plans since we're like on the 3rd of January. So I'm gonna go through my plans. Um, you've seen the letter of the month last month and on the letter of the month this month I have to work on A and B. On A I've got Alice and I don't have the pattern here. I actually left it downstairs but look at that. Must have a needle mind right there. <laughs> but um, the plan is this. So for Alice what I need to do I haven't worked on it yet and it is exactly where it was in the web parade in the whip parade that I showed you the other week. But that's where I am and I want to do a motif. So I'll probably do take what motif there is here in the middle probably and finish and do that full motif there. There you go. And that's where I am. So in January I'll be doing a full motif on Alice. So you'll be seeing this in the next video or the video after. And B I am working on Madonna of the Garden. The reason it's I'm working on that on a bee is because Madonna of the Garden has a baby. There is the baby Jesus. So B for baby. I've already worked on that, so I'm gonna show you in a second. Um, I've been working on it this morning. So that was what I've showed you in terms of plans up till now. The other things I'm doing in terms of plans or challenges for 2021, I'm still taking part of Myth and Magic. Um, I am in the Vampires clan. Um, I was acting lead for the last f few rounds and I've stepped down from that. So um, Kath, one of my, my teammates that was the lead before I stepped up on that, is going to take over again and I'm just going to be like <sighs> stitching what they tell me to stitch. It's a bit less stress for me, especially with work, it's going to be mental. So I needed to, <coughs> I needed to step down a bit. Um, we start the next round on the 11th of January. So that I'm still taking part of that. We've got a good team. Um, we've become very good friends. We had a Zoom call over Christmas um, to see each other face to face and it was great. So yeah, so, and I do want to say hi to all of you, Diane, Tracy, Kat, Laura. Happy New Year. <laughs> but yeah, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Now the other, two groups I want to be active in. Well, there is some other groups that I would like to be active and they will have challenges as we go along and I might pop into them. There is the um, 911 Stitcher has a group and sometimes she has like a few challenges or oh, Stitch 500 Stitches this weekend on, on something, on, on a project or that. I want to do that ad hoc. I want to do, I want to have a look at the magazine monthly, um, well, Caroline's, Caroline, Caroline Zuck and um, Robin from Bird's Eye Stitchers, they run a group, um, the magazine monthly challenge group, 
and I've been looking at it, but I have nothing right now. Actually, I have one piece from a magazine right now. However, I've got a few pieces that I would like to start from magazines. So later in the year, depending on how I'm feeling with what I have, I want to take part to, of that, but I will take part of that ad hoc rather than already saying I'm definitely going to because I, I want to clear out a few other things first or work on a few other things that I've been yearning to work on first. Um, so those are two things that will be in the back burner and I know I, I want to take, um, you know, take part of it. But the other two things that I am committing to right now is Whipgo. So with Whipgo, I have already put the board up. I will put a screenshot of the, of the board. Um, what I've done with Whipgo is, well, I want, I've told myself I want to finish two sort of bigger projects definitely until June and two other bigger projects until December. So I have two in the first half of the year and two in the second half. The first half of the year, I would like to finish Madonna of the Garden, the Mirabilia, and Evening in the Park, uh, my Chatelaine. If I finish Evening in the Park in June when we have the Chatelaine retreat, which hopefully, you know, happens, I'll be giving my Evening in the Park to Serena to frame. And that's, that's my aim. I wanted to go for framing in June. So what I've done is I've taken a few spots in the Whipgo, three or four, uh, four, if I remember well, four, four spots. And I put Madonna of the Garden in four spots that I'm going to work like 10 hours on each. And I've taken four spots on Evening in the, um, evening in the Park and I put in there um, so that it, it, it gets cold more than once. Also... In the second half, I would like to finish English Roses by Mirabilia. And then I'm not sure the second one, what it's going to be. I haven't decided yet what it's going to be. So I plugged English Roses in there like four times as well. And then I've plugged a few other things where I know I want to work on them, but not necessarily I'm thinking I'm going to finish them. So I put my hate in, in one of the boxes. Actually, I put my hate like three or four times. I put Gaia. I put Shimmering Mermaid. I've put, oh, I'm trying to see, I've got my second screen. And Fitzrighty I've put as well. The Dark Queen Sal. Um, I put the Linen and Tread Sal. And not cheated, but I finished my Whipgo board on the 27th. And while I was finishing it, the numbers came up. So I know that I would like to push myself to do the linen and thread sale to finish it this week, like the 2021, to finish it this month. So um, number six, that was called, I've put a finish for linen and thread sale. So for this month, there was three numbers called. The reason being is that the free space was called. And for number six, I, am, I want to finish the linen and thread uh, sale. And for number 18, it's 10 hours on Madonna of the Garden. So Madonna of the Garden is going to be getting a lot of love this um, yeah, this, this this month. I've already done two hours and a half on it this morning. So it needs 10 hours. I'll probably be doing another couple of hours tonight. So that that's probably takes me to half as much as I'm need, I want to do at least this, this, this summer. This month. This summer? This month. So that's my whip comb, right? And every month I'll tell you what I'm going to be working on. So this month, linen and thread sale and the mutton of the garden. Um, if I finish any of what's in there before um, the month, I know technically you can just say, okay, I've done this. But if, let's say, I finish Madonna of the garden and it gets called in September, I plan to replace it with something similar. So if it's a Mirabilia and I've already finished it, I replace it with another Mirabilia. If it's a Chatelaine and I've finished it, I'll replace it with another Chatelaine. So I'll keep the goal just a different design so that I still have something that month. I don't want to say, okay, it's done, it's done. Okay? So that's that's where I'm going with this. So that's, so I have the letter of the month and I have Whipco. The other thing is Semi Sane Stitchers. So I joined the group Semi Sane Stitchers. And I want to do a few of their challenges. I don't want to take too much on. I know they have something like the snowball fight. And I was interested in that. But that's just a bit constant. 
that if you get hit, you have to stitch, and if you're trying to hit others with snowballs, so you have to stitch for that, and that on top of myth and magic is a bit too much for my brain with the whole counting thing, no. So what I'm taking part of is, I'm taking part of two of their yearly, is it a yearly one? Yes, two of their yearly challenges, because I know that's a yearly challenge, and I know what to expect, and I can prepare for it. And then I have, this month, I've taken, I went in for one of their, yeah, one of their monthly ones as well. Next month, if I feel more confident, maybe I'll add more. So the yearly ones, I am taking part in Take a Hike, which is practically, there is different locations and you're supposed to hike there by um, getting stitches so for example this month not this month the first one the first location you need 4543 stitches to get to it so i am counting anyway because of myth and magic and all of that so i'm, I'm just going with it and it's very relaxed it's not oh you need to do a certain amount in a certain month if if i don't get them i don't get them it's fine you know, it's just, it would be nice for me to get the, all the locations. So that's the first one. The other one that is a yearly one is Alpha Mabet. And it's any design that has the alphabet. And the idea is that every month you were, not every month, every two weeks you change a um, letter. We've got, is it 52? Yeah, 52 weeks in a year. 26 alf uh, letters in the alphabet. I hope my maths is right. Anyway, and so if you every two weeks you change to work into the next letter, the idea is that by the end of the year you'll have all the letters done. So I chose Christmas sample. I have one design right now that has the alphabet. I think that's it. And it's Christmas sampler by Cottage by Cottage Garden Sampling. Well, let me get it out. Um and that has a letter. So the idea is that every two weeks I will work on the next letter. So these two weeks I need to do the A, then the third and the fourth week of the year I work on B and C and that. And also while I do that, if it's a small word, I want to do some of the other motifs and hopefully by December, by the end of the year, I'll have this done. So that's my other yearly that I'll be doing with... Um, with semi sane and then the one I've taken up this month, which I'll probably be taking up every month, um, especially because I want I have those goals that I want to finish those two big ones, is the focus challenge. So you can choose a focus piece for for your month, and every thousand stitches, you check in and you get an entry. So this month obviously is Madonna of the Garden. As soon as I stitch 1,000 stitches, I'll check in, and then I do another 1,000 stitches, and I check in. So I, I'm going to keep my Madonna of the Garden as the focus piece for these focus challenges until I finish it. And everything ties in. So it's different challenges, but they tie in to push me into working more on Madonna of the Garden and Evening in the Park, but still have a, a variety of working on something different. Um, in between these challenges, I'll obviously be doing other whips. By the end of the year, I want to have ha worked on every whip I have. I don't want to have a whip that I've not touched it at least once this year. So that's that's my aim. That's where I want to go with this. So that's that's my goals. So for this month, I've got Alice, one motif. I've got Madonna of the Garden. I have it in letter of the month for 10 hours and whip go for 10 hours. Okay. I'm going to try and do 20 hours. However, if I don't manage to do 20 and I do 15, it's fine because I can overlap. The, the challenges can overlap in my head, but I will be trying to do 20 hours if I can. And that ties in with the focus challenge because as I'm doing those 20 hours, I'm doing the stitches for the focus challenge for semi -sane. Then I have uh, the take a hike is just in the background, whatever I'm working on. I'll put up the stitches. I have the linen and thread, the finish. I want to finish. I've got the last two parts to do. I want to finish that. 
and then I've got my alphabets, my A and B need to be done this month. So that's where I am. The other thing I want to try and do is I want to try and stitch from stash. So I'm going to give it another go, a bit more of a series go. I'm going to budget myself for £25. I have two Fabric of the Month going on right now. I've got my Coffee Crafts Fabric of the Month and I've got my Jodry Fabric of the Month. And I've changed my Jodry one to, instead of a Fat Quarter, I get two pieces of Fat Eights. One of them in neutrals and the other one in, pa in a pastel colour. I am unsure of the pastel colour. I'm going to see what I get in January, but... If I'm not happy, because I'm now I'm thinking I'm gonna get neutral and pastel and nothing quite bright, so I might change my pastel or my neutral into bright, and I'll have bright and neutral or or bright and pastel. But we'll see. I'll see how this one goes and what colors I get first. So I got those two, and then I've got my Victorian Motto Thread Club, which right now I'm not very happy. I, we've not had. I have not had a delivery since August. So I'm, I'm waiting for September, October, November, December. It's a lot of money for all of them and I've not paid the invoice this month because I'm thinking I want to see what happens because I've not even received a tracking number for any of them and every time I email I get oh yeah, yeah they'll be sent next week and I'm not getting anything. I know they had issues but at least tell me look you're not gonna get them for another two months but so I don't know what gonna, what's gonna happen with that but I might we'll see we'll see if we'll drop it or not. Hopefully we don't have to, but, but other than that, I'll, my budget will be £25. Until my birthday in April, I will splurge and then I'll just go back into Stitch From Stash. On my birthday, I like to, well, I get birthday money as well. So I don't know how, that's, how that works if you get birthday money, if you can spend it without counting it. I don't know we'll see but yeah those are my goals so I'm gonna show you my whips and these are like I'm, I'm, I'm trying I'm gonna try and have a bit more of a journal but more of like a homemade journal Um, so I, I, I made this page where I have monthly goals the main focus I want to work on the challenges the stitch from stash and like any other notes um, at the same time, I've done like a little calendar where I'll put the number of stitches I work on every day. And then I have like the monthly view where I write any starts and any other notes I want to write. You'll see right now it's still like that because I'm still trying to figure it out and how I want it and, and, and all of that. So that goes in a folder. But I was using it to follow what, you know, to follow the goals, what I've just been telling you. So I'm going to go into whips. <laughs> And what have I worked on? So on the 23rd, I saw you last. Um, on the 24th, I worked a bit more on the Just Nan finish. And then I finished it on the last day of the month. Then on the 24th in the evening, Michael gave me his gift. And his gift was a kit without fabric. I always have my own fabric called. It's Cupid. This is part of the Christmas Eve Couriers by Nora Corbett. There is old reindeers plus a sleigh. He got me, he wanted to get me Rudolph, but it was out of stock. Um, he, he got me kits with the, all the thread and with all the, um, I just realized it's very authentic, um, with all the threads and all like this, the beads and all of that. Um, so you see that came with on my thread, which I've put in on thread drops already. So it's got a water lily. It's got some of the fuzzy stuff, some of the whisper. These are all DMC. And then it came, I've got my little art thing that Tracy has sent me. And then I have, yeah, so I should have done this before, shouldn't I? So it comes with like the magnificence and it comes with like the, the crystals and everything and the pattern obviously and the pattern so so yeah so Michael got me that I already had in mind what fabric I would like to do these on and I used and um, the week four from Jodry the week four from her advent box and I started this and I'm over the moon I do love it this is where I am with it so I started on the border. I did the beading on the border already. And I started, and then I started thinking, if I go wrong with the border here, I'm gonna be crying. So I started stitching on the antler, thinking once I get to, the, to a point here, I will know, I can look up and know if this is correct, 
up to where I arrived and I can continue it but that's where I am with this. The fabric is gorgeous. I plan to use this fabric for all of them so I'm gonna need a, a few other fat halves and then I keep looking at this and thinking these reindeers and this lay would be amazing in my mom's house. She's got, when you walk into the house, she's got like stairs that go with you. So she could put them up around the stairs better than what I have here. Um, so I'm thinking I might work them twice. I've been looking at the threads and I'd have probably enough thread to work them twice. I just need to get crystals. So yeah, so I might work them twice. I don't know. We'll see. Don't hold me to it. The other thing is, I said to Michael, if I finish this by April, will you buy me another one for my birthday? And then I finish that, that by Christmas and he can get me one for Christmas and it will be our thing where he gets me the set. And he said yes. He said definitely he would do that. So, so yeah, there you go. We've got a plan. But I really enjoyed working on this. I really, really love them. And yeah, I do. I love them. And I, obviously I'm, I'm beading as I go, I'm backstitching as I go, I just I just do it as I go. And I'm working it in hand. Up till now it's, it's all been worked in hand. I already have cut the second piece of fabric for the second one, because then I used the rest of it for the new chatelaine that I showed you last week, small hammam oasis. So that, that's a full quarter. Out of the full quarter, the fat quarter, I got two of these and the small hammam oasis. And then I'll, I'll order another couple fat halves of it when I can afford it. Probably on my birthday. I did ask Michelle from Jodry about if I can order more. And she's like, yeah, because we are part of the Advent Club, you can order more at any time. Can I show you again how it will look? So I've stitched, um, sorry, I've stitched this corner, this line up to here, and the antlers up here. So that's where I am with that. So that's where I worked on on Christmas Eve. On Christmas Day, I didn't work on anything. So he gave me the kit and I was very excited, but I worked on like doing the putting the DMCs on floss drops and all of that. And then we went for to his mother's for Christmas and by the time we came home I was so tired and I just, I, I, I couldn't. So I didn't stitch on it on Christmas Day, but I started it on Boxing Day. And he got me another mirror from Zerine as well. Again, full kit without fabric. So pattern, threads, pattern, threads. Mm -hmm. Crying And these. And this is part of the butterfly series and the butterfly misses series and it's called Miss Black Swallowtail and that's how she looks like. Now I've worked on this once on Boxing Day and I started it in the evening so only one evening and it goes. I was surprised with how quick this goes. This is how much I got done. Now, oh, sorry, I'm I need to fix the the, the Q snack. Sorry, it bothers me. It was at the edge, and I had to put two tacks. The fabric was snagged. So I in the in one evening I worked this part of her. I these these it went quicker than I thought it would go. I will be beading it and back stitching it as I go along and I need to pick it up again. So that will be something that I'll pick up in the middle of other challenges. But I loved it. Uh, the fabric, um, Michael chose it. I had it in my stash and he chose it. And the fabric is called um, Da Vinci, Crystal Da Vinci by Picture This Plus. And you'll see it's purple. It's got like a few splotches of like... Oh, where is it here? Like oranges and greens in there. And I think it will look amazing, especially with the wings being predominantly black and with some blue, it will look amazing. So he did well. His choices were amazing. I'm I was very happy with what I got. I was very happy he, he bought from Zarina because she's she's amazing and you know um she helps a lot and, and her kits are great. And so, yeah, I am very happy. There you go. 
So that was gift slash whips. I work on that on that same day. What did I do? What else did I do? Then I actually worked on that Boxing Day. I didn't do much on the 27th and 28th and, and that between the between Boxing Day and uh, New Year's Eve I didn't stitch much. I stitched a bit more on the on the reindeer and picked a few things but I, I didn't I, I I just I couldn't I didn't stitch much. Um but then on Christmas Eve Eve, I think. I picked up my Chatelaine again and then I've been working on it yesterday again, so I'll show you in a second. Um, I'll show you. And this is where I am. And sorry, I've got I was I was testing this that Michael bought me, which is the extension for the Lowry for the frame, and I didn't want to remove it. Um, it was a bit fiddly to put on because it's my first time and I just didn't want to remove it just yet because I, I plan to work on it. And also the side tension as well. They are new and I, it was a bit fiddly to put them on. So let's see if I put... There you go. So that's where I am. So what I did on this... If I do it this way, it goes too dark. But if I go this way... <laughs> That's what happens when they become too big. So I finished all these snowflakes and the beading in them. I finished the beading in the flower beds. So all flower beds and the beading are done. And then I stitched oh, 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 here. There you go. I stitched this one. So yesterday I finished this one and I finished the back stitch in this one. So that one is fully done. Um, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do since now top and bottom I don't have much space so I want to figure out if I want to go up or want to go down and I don't know if I want to do a corner so for now I'm gonna work on the sides because I don't have to go anywhere with the sides and then decide what I want to do top or bottom go up or down I was enjoying going in like around the design but I cannot really go around the design anymore so I'm still trying to figure it out. So let me go a bit closer. Let's see. This one. Yeah. There you go. So I think I'm going to have to watch out how I show it moving forward because it's just, I don't, I don't know, it's huge now. I don't know how to show it. <laughs> it's going to be hard. Put it down somewhere so i work quite a bit on that and i've been very hooked and i keep being hooked on it so you'll be seeing it and obviously because it's one of my focus pieces actually what i said to charlotte dually headed stitcher is what i would like to do is have like a theme so on a saturday it can be my Bella slash Mirabilia Saturday, where I work on the Madonna of the Garden, or if I do a few hours on it and I want to move on to another project, I could get another Mira or another Bella Filipina out and work on that. And then Sunday would be Chatelaine Sunday. So I'd work on evening in the park, but if after a few hours I want to work on a different Chatelaine, I, I work on a different Chatelaine. But so Saturday would be Mira slash Bella or Fancy Ladies. Well, I don't want to say Fancy Ladies because it might be mermaids as well, but yeah, you get the gist. And Sundays it will be Chatelaines. I do, during the week, it's easier for me to grab a long dog with work and everything Trying to set up a mirror or a Bella takes me a bit longer and takes me a bit longer to get into the groove. While if I pick up a long, like pandemic or all of that, I get into the groove much quicker or something smaller. So the, those kind of things or Quakers or all of that are easier for me to work on during the week. So then during the week, I work on that kind of thing. So, so yeah, that's, that's the plan. So I worked on that. And so, so this weekend, I hadn't thought of that yet and I did it the other way around where I worked on Saturday on my Chatelaine and then today I've been working on my Mirabilia but from next weekend I'll do it the other way around or it doesn't matter as long as I do them both. So the other one I've been working on and I've done two hours and a half on it this morning and I plan to do another couple of hours is Madonna of the Garden and this is where I am and I feel like I need to put something behind it. There you go. That's how it looks like. 
and that's where I am. So, where I was, oh, oh, oh. I was, I had stitched up to here, I would say there. And I've done this morning everything in here. So I want to continue up her dress and I just want to, and then I'll fill down here. The same thing, I am beading as I go along and I am backstitching as I go along. This is being worked on Snowy Mountains by Paul Stitches. It's a nice pink and this is going to be a gift for my mother. That's where I am. I'm very happy. I got very into this and I can't wait until I go downstairs and I continue working on this. So that's what I'm going to be working on tonight. I want to do try and hit five hours. It's still six here. So, and dinner, we know what we're going to have for dinner. And Michael's going to be preparing it, hopefully. And um, so we should be okay. Um, I should be okay to do another couple of hours. So that's the other thing I've worked on. And then the other thing, which is a new start. It was my new year, new start. And I've been super excited about starting this, especially because of the fabric. It's the Templar Prophecy. I'm starting, I'm stitching this with um, Lorna from Ladybird, Ladybird Stitches. And um, Lorna's doing it in a red thread on a white fabric. And I'm doing it in a white fabric um, on a red, uh, sorry, with a white silk on a red fabric. So the other way around. So it's pretty exciting. Now she's starting it from... The left hand side I'm starting it from the right hand side so it, it I like that I like when we do stuff that you start seeing hairs and then you see yours and you know they're gonna come together at some point so that's where I am that's my fabric I wanted to show you the fabric first and the fabric is called Miss Scarlet by Sparklies she the, uh, my piece was the first piece she's ever done in this color well, except the tester, um, but now she offers it in her regular range, so you can order it. And that's the name. <clears throat> and that's my start. It's a 36 count, so I'm using... I could have gotten um, away with using two strands, but I wanted it to have that delicate look, so I'm using one strand. And I am working that in a silks for you. I have a silks for you hank, a white, and I know it looks so you see it like this and you think, what the heck? But in reality, if I pull it out, it's all in a nice little ponytail. So I've 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 done them that way so that it's easier for me to pick up what I need. So I have them all in like a little ponytail and I've just taken a few chunks where this is my working chunks when I finish these I'll take some from this and put it on there and that's where they are I'm being very careful I don't foresee I'm gonna have an issue with bleeding I shouldn't um, obviously Kate would have washed the fabric and all of that however when you put it in the project bag and it's just there in the project bag and, and rubbing the silks is rubbing against the fabric. You, you never know. Um, sorry. I dropped the color. Um, you never know what happens. So what I'm doing is I'm being careful that I keep these in the plastic bag, in the project bag, so that it's not rubbing against my, my project. So this is about 0.6%, I would say. Um, and it, I'll be working on it during the week a bit more. I want to go a bit across here and see the lace at the top of the design build up before I put it down for a little bit and maybe I'll pick up Pavine or Pandemic this month at some point. So, new start, new year, new start. I love it. I love the fabric. Every time I look at it, I fall in love with it all over again. And that's it there. So that was the whips I worked on. That's where we were. Now, where are we? 53 minutes and I've got some haul. So I'll, I'll show you quickly some of the haul, but I don't want to take too much time. I know my videos are a bit too very long, but some people love it, some people don't. But yeah. Um, last time, or a couple of videos ago, I told you that I had ordered from Pretchwork Rabbit some Blackbird Designs patterns and I couldn't find them anywhere. Well, as I was clearing the room out to get my desk built, I found them underneath my pattern box. Not inside 
my pattern I have a big box but underneath it so they must have fallen and slipped underneath but I also found some fabric that I ordered with the patterns so here we are these are the two items I got from Blackbird from Patchwork Rabbit but they are Blackbird design this is just one pattern and it's crowning the tree and then this one is a book and it's called home for the holidays it's got multiple designs so i'm not gonna do a flip through but if you guys if anyone wants a full flip through let me know but there is quite a a lot of designs in it however mainly the first one i do want to do is called tis the season and it's this one here i'd probably do the english version rather than the french or i might do the maltese version i might stitch my own maltese it is kitted in in belsois in in belsois classic color works i do have most of them but not all so i haven't decided if i want to do that in silk and maybe get extra design silks and some mississauga silks in there where I don't have the cold for or if to call the cold for but that card no I do love that so that was that and with it I also had ordered the weeks I work the gingham um I was watching Michelle made by Michelle McGraw a couple weeks ago when she showed these and I was looking everywhere in the UK and as soon as I found some in stock I had to order so they had two in stock they had some that is a 28 slash 30 count tin roof and it's a gingham and the other one is a straw the color straw so you see the difference one of them is a bit more kind of rusty color one of them is more a tan greeny color so yeah I want to use that I want to try and, and put some stuff on them so those I have a fat eight well, that's that big I didn't get a fat quarter because I don't see myself doing anything huge on these. It's more ornaments kind of thing or just nans to go on it. So I got that. So that was not the haul from last time. It has been a, a few videos, but I, I just, I had lost it. It was hidden. I also received the Christmas box from Coffee Crafts Fabric. Um, in it, we you get six pieces of fabric, a fat quarter, um, next size down, next size down. So fat, two fat quarters, two fat eights, and two fat sixteenths. Anyway, um, I asked her, I don't do Ada, so I asked her no Ada, and then the count, whatever. So I got a 28 count, and this color is like a yellowy, orangey, gray color. And I'm trying to go quick, because I don't want this to be too long, sorry. You can ask me, ask me questions if you need any questions, if, if I'm just going too quick, but yeah. A 36 count in like a blue color. These are the smaller pieces. Then I got 13 by 18, I got a 32 count. It's a yellow limey kind of color. I'm not sure what I'm going to use it on. Maybe Halloween-y, something halloween -y. I got a 36 count 13 by 18 and this is like an orangey brownish version and I have one of her fabric of the month from like October that is very very close to this color so they could be companion pieces and then the fat quarters I had a 27 count which I didn't know it was a thing but it seems like it's a thing 27 and it's like a nice pink purple piece I do love that color and then I got a piece of 40 count in a pink and it's very different um, I'll show you the difference as well that's that's my 40 count if you look at them the pink is quite different right and that's that's my 40 count let me show you so I really like her pieces I don't know if I'll keep the fabric of the month all year next year um, I feel like three pieces a month because two from Jodri and one from her are a bit too much but I don't know which one I would drop and I don't know if I want to drop anyway so I don't know if I'll do the full year but I quite like the fact that I get mixed even weave sometimes I get a 40 count sometimes a 36 count and I never know the color and that kind of thing so it's fine um I did mention last time I think that I ordered from Paul Stitches but 
the next day she put some stuff on Etsy that I really liked or they were different they're one-offs that you don't you can order a couple of them so I ordered I ordered them from Etsy and I got them the one that I had ordered the day before which will be like an order that she has to die it won't be not the day before what am I saying I ordered them at the beginning of November or mid-November sorry and that one the order won't come for another like few weeks so yeah but then yesterday or the day before she had a 10% off for a new year and I ordered another few but the ones I got on sale are also custom orders so that she has to die and I won't have them until February so even though I'm stitching from stash and I won't be spending at some point in January I'll be getting um, a few fabrics from her receiving them and probably at some point in February I'll be getting a few from her so I'll still be receiving something and I've got an order from Casa Cinina that I've done in on Black Friday that the threads are not going to be in until February so I said it's okay don't worry just keep the order there when you get the threads just send it because I've got like some crinics and thread gatherers in there so so that's fine so I'll still have something going on I just won't be spending spending which is good so these are the pieces and that's that's all I have to show you and I'll be done today these are the pieces I got from Paul Stitches Etsy so this one is called ripples I was a bit surprised it's got a bit of a die mark but it's on the edge and I'm not gonna bother like asking her about it so this is called ripples and it's a blue kind of it's that brown peachy like a blue peachy in the color and this is what I mean here it's got a red die mark but it's right at the end at the edge and there is a, sm a little bit here but you don't see it much but it's a lovely color it might go for a mermaid or a, a, a fancy lady we'll see we'll see what we'll put on it so that is called ripples and these that's a 32 count Murano and is it a 36 by 27 inches? Surely not. It says 36 on 20 inches and 27 inches, but that's a fat quarter. I'll have to check on Etsy, what I actually said on Etsy, because if I paid for a fat quarter, a uh, fat half, and this is a fat quarter, no, no, it was fat quarter. I ordered all of them fat quarter. The, the label must be wrong. So that's um, a 32 counter, 6 by 27. These, the next four were one-offs or she does them every so often because they are the gradient rather than, than the normal design so this is called wilderness a fat quarter in 28 count lugana and it's got shades of green and i can use it i don't know how i'm gonna use it but i just thought they would be handy to have because she doesn't offer them all the time and it's handy to have them in stash, especially if I'm gonna have a st stitch from stash here. This is what happens. Stitch from stash and I end up ordering those. This is called Misty Evening, another fat quarter, 28 count, Lugana. And this goes from like a, a light pink to a pink to like a bluish kind of color. The next one is called Sunny Mountains, 28 count, fat quarter as well. And on one side is like yellowy, grayish colors. The other side is like, sorry, not grayish, like a yellowy, pinkish kind of colors. And it goes into a blue. So that's snowy, mount, sunny mountains. And then the other one that was um, this kind of gradient is called Rainbows and Reflections. And Rainbows and Reflections looks like this, where it is a yellow going into pink, going into blue. There you go. And then the last piece I got from her, it is part of her range, her normal range, is a 28 count quarter called Tinkerbell. Let's look at the mix of the colors. It's a nice mix of colors. So that's what I had in terms of haul. I don't know what haul I will have 
next time because now the orders I have, I have a couple of orders, but I don't know when they will arrive. Um, but yeah, Ooh, with the Coffee Crafts fabric box, I also had scissors and needles. The needles were size 24, which I'll probably never use or I'll use for only like canvas work. Um, the scissors are really good. I've been using them and I had chocolate, which me and Michael have already eaten. So it was a good, a good thing. It was good what, what there was. So that's what I had today, an hour and five minutes. I need to stop this. Um, thank you for watching. Um, any feedback, let me know. Please leave comments, your thoughts and everything. Um, I enjoyed showing you and I always start thinking this is gonna be a 20 minute video and it ends up being over an hour because I, I just enjoy speaking to you guys. But yeah, I do hope most people will probably be going to back to work tomorrow. I hope you guys have a good day. And I do hope that, you know, January 2021 treats you right. And I should see you maybe next week or the week after. Um, we'll see. We'll see how things are and how I'm feeling and also how much progress I, I will do. Because if I don't stitch much during the week due to work, I might not do a video next week. It will be in two weeks time. But yeah um thanks for sticking with me thanks for watching and happy new year again and i'll see you next week or the week after bye